all peace movements are satanic. I'm going to prove it to you from the Bible today. All right. Um, turn your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 8. I'm going to be going over a bunch of scriptures in this study. It's going to be a very important study because right now there's a lot of people, we just need peace. We just, you know, you know, all this peace, 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 peace stuff. You got to be real careful of that. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 4. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Very interesting because the Jews of today that are in America are refusing to return to Israel. Life is much better in, in uh, America. You know, there's, there's better money here. You know, uh, you don't get shot at as much here, you know. Not yet, anyways. But let's uh, let's look at the key word here. Okay, who is this written to? Jerusalem. Okay. But you see, the Bible says that uh, all Scripture is given, given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So we can apply things for correction and reproof. Yes, it's written to Jerusalem in the Old Testament, but there's some application for us today, especially here in America. I'll show you that here in a minute. Verse 6, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? <laughs> like today. Everyone turned to his course, as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How many Jews actually even care about the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming? They don't even think about it. They think things are getting better, and they're not. Verse 8, How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it, the pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed, dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. How many people even believe in this book anymore, this King James Bible? In the lost world, very few people. 100 years ago or whatever else, 200 years ago, people called it the good book. They, called it, they knew it was God's book. They knew that this King James Bible is God's book. Now, not only do the secular lost people not believe that this is the word of God, they reject this as the word of the Lord. They don't even, you know, the, the professing Christians don't even use a King James Bible. They say, I don't understand it. It's too outdated and old and archaic and whatever else. They use these new versions that trace back to the Vatican. So people have rejected the word of the Lord. Verse 10, Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. What are all the bailouts about, you know? We got to bail this out, and you can do forbearance, and you don't have to pay this, and you don't have to. You can go buy this, and your stimulus checks, and we're stimulating the economy by printing more money. Yeah, that's always worked for every country that's ever done that. Let's just keep printing more and more and more money. <laughs> Brilliant. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. Back then, of course, but not today. They, they don't deal falsely today. You know, it's just. Back in the Old Testament that one time, but not today. Verse 11, and here we go. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. How true for today. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Abomination, like sodomy? Abomination like abortion, all the abominations that are out there and everything, were they ashamed? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall, and the time of their visitation shall they be cast, or they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still, assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defensed cities, and let us be silent there? For the Lord our God hath put us to silence, and given us water of gall to drink, because we have sinned against the Lord. 
Whatever comes in the future to this country, America, and to your country out there, be it Canada, UK, Australia, wherever you're at, whatever comes, it does, the people of the countries deserve it. Why? They've sinned. They don't even blush anymore. Things that are abomination in this book. Doesn't even matter. They'll defend it. But let's look at something here. Something that's kind of an interesting thing. Here we have a rather interesting word. Jerusalem. What's, it, uh, what's the application to today, to America? Well, you see, the Jews in the Old Testament, there, well, the New Testament, excuse me, they rejected Jesus. The Old Testament, they rejected Him too. They rejected the Lord. All right, Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Old Testament. So they took away Jesus. And what do they do? What do they replace Jesus with? They said, we don't want the Lord as our God. We want money. You see? So there's the money. And then they said, evil is now good. See, they weren't ashamed when they committed abomination. Evil is now a good thing. What the Bible calls evil, we call good. All depends on how you look at it, you see. Truth is relative. It's You make up truth on your own. And uh, what do they think? They think we can call evil good and we will escape judgment. The E. Why? Because they didn't want any, anything to do with righteousness. They got rid of righteousness Instead, picked lies and deceit. What are you left with? USA! 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 Going to go the same way as Jerusalem. How about that? But I'll show you another little thing here. It's rather interesting. Here we have a cross. And the Satanists come along and they say, let's blaspheme that cross by turning it upside down. The upside down cross, the inverted cross. Also the Catholics too, you know, but we won't get into that. You have St. Peter's chair or whatever else that the Pope sits on with all the demonic stuff behind him. And it's an upside down cross. But, you know, that's, just, that's to honor Peter's death. Yeah, okay, sure. The Catholics sure have a thing with death, don't they? They sure like to... to you know, symbolize and honor death a lot, don't they? Yes, they certainly do. Um, but what do you do in the occult? Let's take that inverted cross and now let's break the two arms of that cross. Snap them to show what? We can have peace if we just destroy Christianity. That's what that symbol means. Oh, no, no, it doesn't mean that. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. The whole movement of the, the peace movement and whatever, and, you know, let's make, make love not war and the whole thing of the, you know, hippie era and all that stuff. Let's peace thing, peace, peace, peace. That's what it's about. Get rid of your, this, uh, these Bible standards and whatever else. Get rid of these things. Let's have peace. This stupid John Lennon, you know, loser comes out and he sings, you know, about imagine the song or whatever else and we can have peace and, and everything. If no heaven above us, no hell beneath us and, and whatever else. Yeah. <laughs> it's just all we got to do is just if we if we want peace, we just got to destroy a, a certain book and some standards that this book talks about, like righteousness, judgment on sin. Let's get rid of that stuff. We're going to talk about that today in this study. Turn in your Bible to Psalm 9, verse 17. Psalm 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Um, you can experience a level of hell on this earth. War is a very close thing to that where you have bombing and you have fire and you have death and there's no water around. And it's black and it's confusing and it's a fog of war and you smell the burning of flesh and you hear screams and everything else. There's some, there's some situations in the past and in the future coming up that closely resemble hell. Now it ends, so it's not exactly like hell. Hell, you know, hell ends, I guess, and you, know, you get the lake of fire for all of eternity. But my point is, 
you can experience some pretty bad stuff. And the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Did I mention a certain nation? Daniel chapter 8. Go in your Bible to, to the book of Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, beginning in verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Destroy. Okay, remember that. And through his policy also he shall cause craft, craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. War. Death. Well, we're going to bring uh, peace to the world. We're going to send our peacekeeping troops to your country. Oh, great. <laughs> That means a lot of people are going to die. Hey, the United Nations, let's, they're, they're going to send peacekeeping forces in. We're going, to have a, we're going to move a peace and whatever. That means death. That means death on a big scale. Okay? I mean, look at the United Nations since they were founded. I don't even know what the number is now. It's over 140-some, you know, wars or whatever else, you know, since the 1940s when it was founded um, that they've sponsored, that they say, yeah, I think that we have no other choice here. we got to, you know, this is a... Peacekeeping forces, send them in, peacekeeping action, police action, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. Killing and death. And the, the man that's going to cause the most death ever in the history of this world is yet to come. The Antichrist, the man of sin. Next we're going to go to Exodus chapter 15. You say, well, you know, that's the Antichrist and, and I worship Jesus and Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus isn't about war. My Jesus wouldn't do that. You know, I remember there was a sissy preacher. He died and went to hell. But um, Denny Keniston, he was a Baptist, Hiles Anderson graduate, and he was a Baptist, and uh, he helped found a thing called the Charity Ministries in Lancaster County, which I saw those people quite a bit. Denny Keniston was a Baptist preacher from Hiles Anderson, and um, then he founded it with an Amishman. Yeah, real great. But I remember I did a, a study on him about pacifism years and years ago. And he said about, you know, this violence and whatever. And he said, my Jesus wouldn't do that. I can't imagine that. My Jesus wouldn't do it. Oh, you had a false Jesus there. Okay. Let me show you about the Lord here. Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed, triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Why is it that modern CCM music has removed the military element that used to be there in the old hymns? Onward, Christian soldiers, lead on, O King Eternal. Am I a soldier of the cross? I'm not talking about joining secular military and trying to make it Christian. Okay, I'm talking about the church of the living God being a militant army that goes out and tells people that we're going to shut this bar down. You got a bar bringing in, into town? We're going to shut you down. Hey, the Catholics are bringing in this thing here and they're doing this thing here. Let's fight them. Let's keep them out of here. Let's kick them out of here. We're, there's a Catholic politician trying to get in. Let's, let's stop him. Where did it go? Listen to this modern Christian music stuff. And it's, Jesus is so cool. He's my homeboy. He's so good. He's so nice. Oh, we just love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. And Where's the military element? The Lord's a man of war. Hmm. I think maybe they switched uh, Christ there. Isaiah 42. Why? Well, because the uh, church buildings did the only thing they could do. They were fake from the beginning, so they eventually got infiltrated by lost people. 
Isaiah 42, verse 13 and 14. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holden my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. The Lord's a man of war. But you don't see that, do you? It's going to be about peace. I see these people, these lost people, and they say, you know, I'm, I'm a warrior for the Prince of Peace, you know, and, and I'm, going to, I'm, I'm out here, I'm going to spread peace. We can, we can stop this new world order if we just have peace. You're a fool. You're a fool. That's not Jesus that you're worshiping. Jesus Christ is not coming to bring peace. The Antichrist Christ comes and He promises peace, but He destroys many as a result of it. And you say, well, Jesus is going to do... Jesus is coming to bring war on a level that this world has never seen. 200 million man army, the battle of Armageddon, and Jesus wipes them out with His Word. Slaughters them. And then the body of Christ, the uh, church of the living God, the, the, you know, we're now immortal, we're there with Jesus Christ in our resurrected bodies. We come down on horseback and we ride through that that gore, 200 million man army wiped out and we're riding through the blood and the guts. That's what the Bible teaches. I've proved that in other studies. Oh, I, oh, I just, I don't know if I could believe that. I just, I think we should have peace and we should just be more meek and we should, we should just be kind and we should, you know, uh, you're in the wrong army. You're not even in the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. continue. Matthew chapter 10. See, well, this is all Old Testament. We need to get back to the New Testament because Jesus is nice there. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 through 39. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Well, Jesus said that? Yeah, because he's still the same Lord that was back there in the Old Testament. He's still the same man of war that was back there. Verse 35, For I am come to set a man at variance, against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that followeth, or he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Peace, huh? Peace. Well, I, I became a Christian and now my family just loves me and we just all love each other and we all got saved and we're all good Christians and we just love each other and all, all of our relatives get along. We have great times at our family get-togethers. You're not saved. You're not saved. You're not saved. You're denying the words of Jesus Christ. Well, I, everybody's my friend. I'm a friend to everybody. I'm, I'm a good person. Everybody likes me. You're lost. You're on your way to hell. You're denying the words of Jesus Christ. Well, I just think that we're supposed to be peacemakers. Um, well, the only peacemakers that are there in the Sermon on the Mount is when Jesus Christ is ruling this world with a military dictatorship. Then you can be a peacemaker because Satan is bound in the thought bottomless pit for the thousand years. And Jesus Christ has military dictatorial rule over the whole world. Then you can have peace. Peace through, through a superior firepower. That's how that works. Ruling and reigning with a rod of iron, not a bouquet of daisies. Right? <laughs> you don't understand Jesus. Most people don't. You say, well, okay, but that's Jesus. That's not us. We're not supposed to be warlike. We're not supposed to be militant. I don't, I, I think some of your older preaching was good. Every time I hear this thing, you know, I'll say it. 
I think some of your older preaching was good. You were so much more gentle, but something's changed in you. It was your wife that did this thing to you. She, she made you bitter or something. Or, or, or it was uh, um, some other thing that, you know, but your old preaching was good, but your new stuff. Every time I hear that, I just say to myself, these people never even watched me back years ago. I was just as militant back years ago when I first got started, way back in 2008, 2009, really started getting into the thing. I was just as militant back then as I am today. I've gotten more focused in my attacks, which has made me more enemies, but uh, I'm still just as militant. So somebody comes along and says, you know, I liked your older stuff, but your new stuff is just, you know, you're so militant. <laughs> you don't know the first thing about me um, in the history of this ministry. But uh, let's see about this thing. Of, well, it's just Jesus. Jesus, it's okay if Jesus fights because he knows. He knows somehow, you know, he, he can understand people's thoughts. So it's okay if he fights and he's warlike, but we're not supposed to be as his followers. We're to love our enemies and things. Yeah, love them by lying to them so that they die and go to hell. You don't love them. Let's, let's love our enemies by letting them walk all over us and treating us as doormats. That's not love. That's not love. What did Jesus say to his disciples? Luke chapter 22, beginning in verse 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. You'd be better off without a garment if you're unarmed, or you're, you, you don't have a sword, you're, you're unarmed. The Lord says, sell your garment. Modern day term, sell your coat. Lord, I need this winter coat to stay warm. Um, with what's coming, you better have a gun. You better have a sword. You better have a baseball bat. You better have a, name it, a weapon. And we're going to see about this later, by the way, too. You say, well, I just kind of see that maybe, you know, I remember John MacArthur, the, the Masonic fool that he is, and he came out, somebody actually showed me this quote. He, he came out and he said, when Jesus said, you know, that they were to buy a sword, it meant kind of a long knife that they would have used to, to fillet fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, Jesus was speaking to professional fishermen and they didn't have they didn't have enough fillet knives, you know? So Jesus is saying, you better get a fillet knife, you know? You're going to need that. <laughs> okay. If you're following John MacArthur, repent. That guy's a wicked devil. Verse 37, for I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. You need to have weapons. Okay. Uh, I think pacifism in this life right now is satanic. Just be very straight with you. If you're a pacifist, you're, you have some major problems. You certainly don't understand Jesus Christ. And you don't understand the dispensation that we're currently in. Okay, um, you need to have weapons. And that's going to become apparent very soon. It already has, you know, here in America, you know, all these uh, riots over this, this uh, pervert that was murdered. And he was murdered. George Floyd was murdered. Sure, absolutely he was murdered. Was it right? No, it wasn't right what they did to the guy. But he was a criminal and a pervert. Let's not forget that. And we'll, let, we'll, well, you know, to prove that we're upset about police brutality, we're going to go out and burn places down. It's all, it's all being done for the race war that's coming for the big slaughter that's coming. That's all it is. I'll be talking about that in another video. Okay. Um, yeah. John chapter 16. You see, well, then there is no place in the life of a Christian for peace. There's no peace there. We're just supposed to be at war all the time and fighting all the time and everything else. No, I didn't say that either. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world, notice the, notice the distinction, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You can have peace in Jesus Christ. But don't say, well, I can have the peace that I have with Jesus, I can give, and I can have it in my world here around me. We can bring peace back. Happy times ahead, you know. Let's 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 keep America great by reelecting a Jesuit named Donald Trump. Yeah, you're brilliant. Um, 
Okay, sorry about that, battery went dead. Um, but the whole point is there, you can have, the only way that you're gonna have peace in this life, if you're saved, is your relationship with Jesus Christ. You're gonna go through all kinds of bad stuff. And you know, we've been very, very blessed to be living in a time when there hasn't been a whole lot of war and persecution and whatever else, but that stuff is, is coming, like a flood, okay? Um, not a very uh, happy future. Let's see about Revelation chapter 19. I just, I love reading these verses. I've read them many times and I continue to read them because um, they're just so good. Revelation 19, verse 11. Let's begin in there. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. The war that Jesus Christ is bringing is going to be in righteousness. In other words, what is righteousness? It's things that are right. Um, is the American government, is uh, the good old uh, USA here, are they doing things that are right? No. Is it a righteous government? No. Um, do we have a righteous news media that's lying and causing uh, division and dissension and hoping for war? No. Do we have righteous people that are burning things down? No. Righteous people that are out marching for sodomite rights? No. Do we have righteous people that are aborting their children because they don't want the responsibility of being a parent? They can, they can fornicate, but they don't, they don't want to have the fruit of that relationship there to raise. So we'll just go murder them. Is that righteousness? No. But when Jesus Christ comes back and he says, I'm going to put an end to this. He doesn't come down and say, peace and love, peace, peace. I don't want to judge you for your sin. I don't, I'm, I'm here to be, be nice and, and everything and, and friendly and let's all come together and let's all put aside our differences and just integrate the whole world together and let's just all, that's not Jesus. And what, it's what the Antichrist is going to say, but it's not going to be him either. He comes and he brings war. Verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, which I talked about earlier. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Peace? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, I, I believe in peace. I believe that the way forward, we need to have peace. Let's have solidarity. Let's all stand together and destroy our law enforcement in this country. Yeah, our peace, you know, guys that are there to maintain law and order and peace and things. You know, uh, okay, yeah. You know, let's just get rid of any, you know, anybody that's going to stop the criminals. And the way that we're going to show that we can get we can do without police is by burning cities down. You say, well, okay, but why are the police standing down? Because they're being told to by their Jesuit masters, by the papists that are trying to divide and conquer this nation. Very, very old, very ancient military tactic. Divide and conquer. Get the people to kill the, each other. And then you come in with your military martial law dictatorship. And then you have them. Again, what's the future? What, is, what does prophecy say in the end times? Is there a liberal, communistic, you know, Antifa, Black Lives Matter thing in the end times? Or is there a right-wing, radical, fascist army controlled by the Vatican and the Antichrist? Option number two. <laughs> Let's continue. Verse 16, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And Jesus is about peace. He says, hey birds, come here. Come here birdies, come here, come here. You want to have something good to eat? Watch this. That's peace. 
well, I guess technically a piece of that soldier and a piece of that horse and a piece of this king and a piece of that captain and there's old general so-and-so and hey there, Mr. Eagle, you want a piece of that? See, Jesus does bring peace. I was wrong the whole time. Verse 19, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Can't wait for that. Boy, I can't wait for that. I can't wait to be part of that army. Lead on, O King Eternal. If you haven't heard of that hymn, look it up. It's a beautiful one. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Huh. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Jesus Christ is a man of war. You talk about a show-off, and he deserves it. Hey, turns around, looks at us, check this out. He doesn't go down and, you know, with his sword and he's doing this and he's slicing and up and down and he's doing roundhouse kicks and behind his back and going like this and swinging. On his horse, he looks down and he speaks. The voice of the Lord, he can speak and the wind stops. He can speak and the animals obey him. And he can speak and wipe out 200 million troops. The largest army ever assembled. And Jesus looks down and speaks and slaughters all of them. We ride down through, and then the birds have their time of peace. Isaiah 57. There's going to be more and more calls for peace. You know, when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. If you remember that, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, people are going to call for peace. We want peace, but we don't want Jesus. We want peace, but we don't want to hear about sin. We want peace, but we don't want to hear about righteousness. We want peace, but we don't want to hear about judgment to come. I want salvation without repentance. I want salvation without a changed life. You're wicked. Isaiah 57, verse 17 through 21. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me, and was wroth, and he went on frowardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, and will heal him. I will lead him also, and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. He'll, the Lord will fix up your life if you let him. You come to him broken and say, Lord, please save me. He will do it. He will make your life better. I'm living proof of that. I was quite wicked. I was a, just a wicked little devil back as a lost guy. Church going, you know, nice little Christian, you know. I was wicked, very, very wicked. And the Lord's done great things in my life. Verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. He will bring peace into your life in Jesus Christ. Not in this world, but in Jesus Christ. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Some politicians are going to be standing up soon this year. I want to continue having America prosper as we go into these times of peace ahead. I think all of us have peace on our minds. Okay, you going to bring Jesus Christ into the equation? No, I, you know, I, I, you know, I might hold up an RSV and you know pose with it. You know, does that look good? Does that does that look presidential enough to? Does that, did you get my picture? Good. Oh, the, the turn this way a little bit. Peace. We want, we want peace. Yes, we, we want peace. How about Jesus Christ? 
How about repentance on a national level? Well, no, no, we're not going to do that. Then there will be no peace. How about you wage war? Instead of waging war on coronavirus, waging war on uh, whatever, how about we wage war against wickedness and sin? How about we shut down Hollywood? How about we uh, shut down the news media? How about we shut those things down? How about, how about we kick all the Jesuits out of America? Shut down all the church buildings. Oh, oh, oh. We can't do that. But you're not going to have peace. But I'll show you the, the go-to verses for the, uh, the wicked out there. Isaiah chapter 2. The United Nations, the usual nonsense, the unsaved nuts, whatever you want to call the UN. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 2. This is what they have on their building. Verse 4, we'll get into it here in a minute. But the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. USA. <laughs> and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. I'm not saying that's the USA. I'm far from it. But this is talking about the thousand year kingdom of Jesus Christ. Many call the millennial kingdom. Verse 3, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and He will teach us of His ways. He's there, physically, and He's going to teach people. Oh, I'm a post-millennial believer, and we can agree to disagree on the, you're pre-millennial, you know, that Jesus is here and comes before the millennial kingdom, and then He's, you know, there, and we're post-millennial, that Jesus comes at the end of it, and that the church reigns for a thousand years then you don't believe the Bible. And I'm millennial? Yeah, right, that there is no millennial kingdom. We're kind of in it right now, sort of, kind of, maybe. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Um, he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He's there physically. I don't know how you can't get that. But look at verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Judging among the nations, rebuking many people. And what happens next? And they, the people, shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. The United Nations has that on the front of their building, half of verse 4. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But somehow they missed the first part there. He shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. You see, the United Nations, they want this. They like that. Isn't that nice? But they don't want this. And the way that they want this is for this. Let's destroy Christianity. Let's destroy Jesus Christ. We won't have Jesus as our king. We'll bring in the kingdom. It'll be our efforts, our peace movement, our this, our that, our, what we can do. If we just look past our differences, if we, would just, if we would just stop rampant racism, if we would just stop wars, if we would just de-escalate and, and denuclearize, and, and if we would just have peace talks, and if we would just, just... You can't have this. Okay? This is impossible. All you can have is the cross. What did Jesus say? Deny yourself and take up your cross? Hmm. And come to Him as a sinner? Look to the cross to be saved? Jesus died for my sins, according to the Scriptures. He was buried, and He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's how I get saved. I have to put my faith in Him by coming to Him as a sinner. No good, dirty, rotten sinner. And saying, I have no peace. And the only way I'm going to have a peace is through the blood of His cross that He shed. That's the only way. And I saw there was a, a guy, I've recommended him in different videos, and I don't, I'm not going to recommend him. 
Dr. John Bergman come out with some good stuff on health, but uh, saw a video he did on civil disobedience, and he quoted Isaiah 2.4 from some new version, figures, and uh, he leaves off the first part. We can do this. We can do this. The power of believing, if we just, if we just come together, we can do this. No, we can't. You're a servant of Satan. We can't. Man's not going to beat his swords into plowshares and his spears into pruning hooks until the Lord makes some major violence happen on this world. Blood running in the streets, people dying, a third of all people dying in just one of his judgments in the book of Revelation. The birds eating uh, all the flesh of the 200 million man army and their horses. Peace comes after that. But there's an interesting little tie-in here. Isaiah 2, verse 4, right there. But yet, uh, most people will miss Joel chapter 3. Turn in your Bible to Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3, right before the book of Amos. In your Old Testament, one of the minor prophets. Joel chapter 3, beginning in verse 9. Okay? Very interesting, because this is actually written in the Old Testament, but it's about right now. Proclaim, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. You say, well, what, how do you know that that's about now? Well, because the times of the Gentiles has not been fulfilled yet. So this is to be declared among the Gentiles. Prepare peace. And just learn to love one another and learn to overlook things. And let's make all religions come together and just be happy. And let's just sit around and smoke pot and, you know, listen to rock music and play video games and do nice things for each other. And let's not talk mean to anybody or judge anybody's sin. doesn't say that. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. You ready? Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let me give you a modern day way of doing that. You look out there in the field and there's a farmer's tractor out there. War is going to get so bad at some point in time, you better go out and take a piece of metal off that thing. It's a plow. Let's just cut a piece of metal off that thing. Let me grind an edge on that thing. Now I have a blunt force, or well, blunt force, it wouldn't be blunt force if you made it into a sword, it would be a sword, but you take a, a big iron pipe off of the thing or something, you got a blunt force weapon. People breaking into your house and you come over and smash them on the head. You hear their skull crushing under the weight of your blow. Bam! Here comes another guy through. You grab your sword and you chop his arm off. And he screams and falls back out. And you run out and <clears throat> finish him off. You say, oh, I can't believe a Bible-believing preacher would say these things. Um, I'm not. That's what the Bible says. Your garden tools, you out there, you're doing a little gardening and things. Better get ready to use them for war. That's what's coming. You say, well, that, well but Brian, the rapture, the rapture. We don't know when it's going to happen. It could be all kinds of killing and death before the catching up happens then you can take the way of being a pacifist and just simply say, well, I'm just going to let them come in and kill me. Okay, that's up to you. Um, entirely up to you. But you see, um, it's not really loving your enemies to be a pacifist because what you're doing is actually emboldening the evil. I mean, just, just look at what happened with this, all this Black Lives Matter, Satanism and everything that these people are doing, going around burning cities down and everything. And all of a sudden you have some of the people standing up on their top of their stores with their weapons and saying, not my store. Don't come after my store. Don't come after my livelihood. If you do, I'm going to kill you. And all of a sudden, those people looked up there and said, you know, I don't think we're going to go to that store. Let's go pick on another block. You mean to tell me weapons actually caused a little small degree of peace? Yeah. An armed society is a polite society. Peace through, through, through uh, superior firepower. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, a bunch of goonies come and they're going to destroy things, and all of a sudden they come in and there's a whole bunch of people standing there and they got weapons ready to go. We don't want to fight. But if you come to us, you're going to get slaughtered. And again, you know, these ignorant people in the Black Lives Matter movement, they have no idea what's being set up. Right now, their police are being told to stand down and everything else, and it's inflaming real racism in this country. And uh, the time's going to come that that switch is going to get flicked, and those people are going to get slaughtered. Just a total bloody slaughter. So what the Bible says is going to happen in the end times, you see. Verse 11, Assemble yourselves, and come all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither calls thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the, heaven, let the heathen be wakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Notice it's not even there. Okay, it's the day of the Lord is near. So there could be some stuff coming in the future here. Um, the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. At the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, you can read about that in Matthew 24. The Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. So it starts out war, death, killing, and it ends up with the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. He brings in peace, but it doesn't come until there's a lot of war. And the Lord is saying, hey, Gentiles, here's some advice for you in the end times. Um, you better go on out and get some weapons. And so much so that if you have some sharp garden tools, <laughs> your, your plow shares and your pruning hooks, um, get ready to use those. Weapons all around. Just armed to the teeth. Why? Because that's what the future is. Fighting, killing. I hope we can be caught up before that stuff happens. But there's no guarantee of that. We're going to be caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble, before the Antichrist shows up. But uh, there are going to be some real violent times coming. And they're already here. <laughs> okay? But finally, let's finish up in Philippians chapter 4. I just get so sick and tired of hearing these people. Oh, just we can have peace. We can just, you know, all these people. Let's have this intellectual peace through social justice and just in good. Let's just be good to one another. And let's just, let's use our television mind control to just let people think that we can do this. We can have this without this. That's satanic. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In me ye shall have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but in me you can have peace. So Jesus Christ said, it's going to get real rough. Hey, disciples, sell your garment and buy a sword. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Get it done. Get ready to fight. So, well, boy, this is really going to stink. Well, it might, but you know what? Uh, you can still have peace in me. You can have peace because you know where you're going to go when you die. 
You don't have to wonder about that. You don't know. I don't, I don't really know what's going to happen to me if I die. Hey, if you die, you go right to be with the Lord. There's peace there. But peace in this world? You've been deceived. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. You know, the truth isn't always positive. Better think about that. Whatsoever things are honest. Do you know you're not going to have peace with a lot of people if you're honest with them? Um, I think that we were really concerned about this coronavirus stuff. And, and uh, I, I just, oh, so many people have died. Well, i got to be honest with you. The coronavirus thing is a scam. It was patented by the U.S. government, by the Perbright, created in the Perbright Institute in the U.K. and, and everything. And, and um, it's really just kind of a scam. I mean, that uh, what, 200,000 that they've said are dead or maybe we're getting to that or whatever. Um, it's nothing compared to how many people have died of AIDS and cancer. And even the seasonal flu has been more deaths. And, and uh, you know, and you, what are you doing? You're being honest. It's not going to lead to peace, though. It's going to lead to anger and fighting. Maybe arrest and imprisonment in the future. Um, uh, we're here to give you the, your vaccine. Well, I got to be honest with you. I'm not taking it. Look, we're just, we're here concerned for your safety. We're here as peaceful people. You don't want to resist that now, do you? If you do, we might have to take you to the psych ward at the hospital. You got to be honest with them. If you do, uh, you can know that you have peace with Jesus Christ. You're going to have peace with the world. Jesus didn't come to give you peace with the world. He came to bring a sword. Fighting. You understand? Whatsoever things are just. <laughs> oh boy. Is it just to force people to get vaccines? No, it isn't. Is it just to make businesses shut down because of something that's not even that, that dangerous? No. you got to fight that stuff. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Do not fall for this worldly peace movement. It is a lie. It's not a lie from the pit of hell because people that are in hell know the truth. Okay, don't fall for that statement. That's a lie from the pit of hell. People in hell understand why they're there. They understand who God is. They understand that they've rejected Jesus Christ and they understand that they're not going to be getting out. There are no lies from hell. Okay. I understand the thought behind it. You know, it's the devil runs hell and God runs heaven. That's another stupid lie of the modern professing Christians. But uh, no, it's actually a lie of the devil. That's why it is called satanic. It is of Satan. All right. That's what this is. Oh, but I disagree with you because so-and-so, he's brilliant. And he said that we can have peace if we just do this and this and that. Well, the solutions are the the ingredients for peace if it doesn't include coming to jesus christ as a broken sinner then it's a lie and it's satanic so um war is coming i'm going to give you that as a prophecy uh, war is coming why the bible says so he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars Okay, see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. Matthew chapter 24 talks about that. Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples. Um, war is coming. It's inevitable. Um, it's gotten to a point now where there are people that, uh, that need to die. Just going to be very honest. I'm not advocating violence. I wish it could, we didn't have to go through this thing. And I wish it didn't have to be that way. But there are people that are such differing opinions now. There will be no peace. There's no reconciling. People that are pro-gun with people that are anti-gun. How do you make a compromise? Well, you can have certain guns. The anti-gunner comes along and says, 
will allow you to have, uh, you know, single action rifles and shotguns and revolvers that are single action and, and uh, you know, something else like that. The pro gunner comes along and says, no, we want all guns. Second Amendment shall not be infringed, you know. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. How do you compromise? How do you have peace? By one side you're being killed. That's the only way for peace. That's the only way it's going to get along. I mean, how do you legislate it? You see? There's no legislation. Uh, black racists versus white racists. Let's have peace. How? How? We're a uh, capitalist versus communist. Let's have peace. How can it be done? One side has to kill the other side. And then you'll have a measure of peace. <laughs> it's, I, I, again, look at any culture down through history. That's what always happens. Well, well, but we're in some magic time now where, uh, you know, we can put chips in people's brains and force them to do things and whatever else. Yeah, but you still have one side winning over the other. You know, uh, uh, I remember seeing this sodomite guy the one time and he was talking to the CEO of YouTube and he, and he said to her, she was saying, oh, you know, that uh, the, the algorithms on YouTube and whatever else, it's all art artificial intelligence. So it's, 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 you know, very impartial and they don't judge according to certain ideologies. And the guy said, yeah, but he said the computer has to be programmed by somebody. <laughs> Bam! Nailed her. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, we're just going to have computers that will judge if, if videos are appropriate or not. No, because the computers are programmed by somebody that tells the computer what to do. But we'll have peace. We can have it through artificial intelligence. We can have it through councils and church councils and United Nations and, and whatever else and things. Not going to happen. So um, prepare for war. Jesus Christ told his disciples to uh, sell their garments and buy a sword if they didn't have one. And I recommend having some kind of weapon, some kind of way to uh, defend yourself. I can tell you it's a very, very frightening thing if people are trying to kill you and you have no way to defend yourself. And if you're armed to the teeth and you make that known to the criminals if they're trying to get in or whatever else, or they know that you are not somebody to mess with, um, you'll live in peace seen it. Uh, the quickest deterrent to crime is somebody that's armed. Uh, again, I knew a guy growing up, one of my best friends growing up, and his, his dad went out and bought a, the infamous Smith & Wesson uh, revolver, 44 Magnum, you know, Dirty Harry special type of a deal. Big stainless steel pistol, you know, I don't remember what inch barrel the thing was, 10 inch barrel or something, the big ones, you know. And, uh, He's in the city the one time, and, and he's at the stoplight, and here comes a guy up, walking up to the vehicle, and he's doing this, looking back and forth. He's got his hand in his pockets, and, and he comes up to the window, and this guy had got his, he got his 44 Magnum out, laid it on his lap, pointed towards the door, and he looks, and the guy stops, looks down, and, he, and this man says, not today, buddy. And the guy went, Whoa, 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 okay, all right, hey, man, all right, whatever, man. And he took off running. There was no violence. No violence at all. A, uh, it was somewhat peaceful, you see. But it came as a result of a weapon. Nobody out there is ever going to convince me that Christians shouldn't be armed or, you know, that we shouldn't fight or whatever else. Uh, you're ignorant of church history, okay? Um, when the body of Christ rises up and says, that's enough, specifically to the Catholics and the Catholic armies and whatever coming in and torturing people. And you say, that's enough. We're going to fight. We'll start out fighting with the sword of the spirit. But if it has to come to a physical sword, we'll have to take that up. In defense, we're not trying to take over anything or establish a Christian country or whatever. No, 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 no. All we're trying to do here is just defend ourselves and say, okay, leave us alone. All right? And I believe that the Lord will be for that. And there's a big question mark right now. What's the condition of the church of the living God going to be in when the Lord says, come up hither? How many people will have died? The Bible doesn't say. 
the Bible gives no hint at how many, how bad it could get before the catching up. The reason being is because I think it's up to us. The Lord knows what's going to happen. Sure, absolutely. He, he, you know, it's up to Him. Or not, excuse me, not up to Him as far as you know, He hasn't pre-set everything like the Calvinists teach. Um, he knows what's going to happen. But right now, we're not in that position of you know eternal knowledge and omniscience. You know, all knowing. In other words, um, so right now we have a free will to say, okay. I can see it getting worse. I can see violence coming to my town. I can see violence coming to this area. I think I'm going to fight. I don't want to let these people just come in and, and just destroy our town and whatever else. I'm not going to let, just let the, the Catholics come in and take over. I mean, you know, just look. Remember, the Jesuits were formed as a military order for the Counter-Reformation to bring all churches, all people back under the authority of Rome. That was what they were founded for in the mid-16th century. That's historical fact. That's not conspiracy theory. And look and watch politicians that are Jesuits, uh, media personalities that are Jesuits, Jesuit trained. Okay, and again, I can show the, the thing from the two provincials, two Jes high-level Jesuits are called provincials, and they say that somebody that's part of the Jesuit family is someone that has, they don't even have to be Jesuit priests. If they've gone to a Jesuit school, they're part of the Jesuit family. That's why we call these people Jesuits. I fully understand that Donald Trump is not a Jesuit priest, but he is a Jesuit because he went to Fordham University. All right, Bill Clinton went to Georgetown University. Do the research. Look these things up. Fight. Do you understand? Fight. Don't sit on the sidelines. Don't say, well, I just don't feel, I, I think if I can just kind of stay out, we might be able to have peace. We can just kind of, I'll shut my mouth and whatever else. You're supposed to be honest with people. You're supposed to tell the truth and be concerned of, for things that are just. Justice needs to be done. Okay, we really need to be praying. We need to get serious. Serious about getting sin out of our lives. Serious about righteousness. Again, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, the Bible says. What is righteousness? It starts with you and me. If there are things that we're doing in our life that are not right, then we need to stop. We need to each get our own lives straightened out with the Lord and say, Okay, I want to have righteousness, Lord. Help me to fight my sin. All right? A nation can be... Not, you know, we're not going to save America if we all really get back right with the Lord and really, you know, go out there as righteous people. But we can postpone the judgment that's coming. We might be able to make it till the catching up without having to see death and horror and whatever else in terms of on a nationwide scale. Okay. We didn't see any riots in our area. All right. There are no, there's very few Black Lives Matter people up in this area. If they ever come to this area, they're going to get slaughtered, quite frankly. Um, in a lot of country areas, the same thing. Uh, and that's what they want. That's what the Jesuits want, divide and conquer. Again, they want the race war. They understand that the coronavirus thing, some people are going to go with it, some people aren't. You know, you're, you're going to have liberals that will say no vaccination, conservatives that will say no vaccination, liberals that will say, okay, I'll take it, other conservatives that will say we'll take it. But how do you really divide and conquer the people? You can divide and conquer through the race war. Because that's something that gets people really, really angry. I mean, you can see it. You can see it coming. So find ways to tell people the truth, to be honest about people, to be honest about what's happening, to show them about the Bible prophecies and things that are coming in the future. Now's the time to fight. Now is not the time to, to sit down and, and waste your life away as a Christian. Okay, we need to stand up and fight. Right? So please take heed to my words. And um, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.